when you talk about a lesson where the title gives the lesson away, this would be that lesson. <laughs> Mr. Richards here. And today is Grade 6, Unit 3, Lesson 7, Practice Problems Review, is on Equivalent Ratios Have the Same Unit Rates. All right? Equivalent Ratios Have the Same Unit Rates. We spent time doing equivalent ratios. We've spent some time doing unit rates. And I guess this is the lesson that ties it all together because equivalent ratios have the same unit rates. All right. We've got seven practice problems here on lesson seven. Question one. A car travels 55 miles per hour for two hours. Complete the table. Well, we're going to have equivalent ratios in this table because, after all, equivalent ratios have the same unit rates. If it's going one hour and 55 miles, half of that is going to be 27 and 5 tenths, 27 and a half, just 55 divided by 2. But guess what? That's still going to be 55 miles per hour because, you know, equivalent ratios have to have the same unit rates. Now, one and a half hours, if you take that 55 and multiply by one and a half, you get 82 and a half. And if I were to take that 82 and a half and divide it by the one and a half, we would get 55 miles per hour because equivalent ratios have to have the same unit rates. Then 110 miles. Well, you know, I know it's going to be 55 miles per hour here because, you know, equivalent ratios have to have the same unit rates. Now, if I were to take 110 miles and divide it by the 55 miles per hour, guess what we get? Two hours. And so 55 over 1 is 55. 27 and a half over a half is 55. We already showed 82 and a half divided by 1 and a half is 55. And 110 divided by 2 is 55. And so those four equivalent ratios all have the same unit rates. Question two. The table shows the amounts of onions and tomatoes in different sized batches of a salsa recipe. Elena notices that if she takes the number in the tomatoes column, if you like to talk to, and divides it by the corresponding number in the onions column, she always gets the same result. Well, gosh, 16 divided by 2 is 8. 32 divided by 4 is 8, and 48 divided by 6 is 17 million, or just 8. And so what does this 8 mean? Well, that would mean that 8 ounces of tomatoes per 1 ounce of onions. Because all of these, 16 over 2, 32 over 4, 48 over 6, are equivalent ratios. And equivalent ratios have to have the same unit rate. All right, question three. A restaurant is offering two specials, just two today. Ten burritos for $12 or six burritos for $7.50. Noah needs 60, that's a lot of burritos, for his party. Should he buy six orders of the 10 burrito special or 10 orders of the six burrito special? Because either way, he's getting 60 burritos. Explain your reasoning. Well, if I look at this $12 for 10 burritos, a couple different ways of going about this question, all right? You could just say, I want to get this to be up to 60 burritos, and I'll just compare the final cost. Well, how do I get there? 10 times 6 is 60. So 12 times 6 is $72 for those 60 burritos. Hope to get some salsa with them. Now, we could also do $7.50 for just 6 burritos. Well, what's that going to be for 60 burritos? 
Well, 6 times 10 gets me to the 60 burritos, and so $7.50 times 10 is going to get me $75. And like I've said in past videos, unless you want to spend more, which why would you, your best price is the $72 for the 60 burritos. So the $12 for 10 burritos is the better buy. Now, since this lesson is called equivalent ratios have the same unit rate, let's take a peek at the unit rates here. If we looked at $12 for 10 burritos and thought to ourselves, self, what does one burrito cost? Self, divide by 10 here. And you get $1.20 per one burrito at our winning restaurant. And if we were to take $7.50 and our six burritos and get that to one burrito, $7.50, sneak up here and divide it by six is $1.25. So it is five cents more expensive per burrito. And so of course, just one more way of showing that the $12 for 10 burritos is the better buy. Complete the table so that the cost per banana remains the same because equivalent ratios have the same unit rate. All right, four bananas. The unit price is 50 cents per banana. B A N A N A S. Two dollars total because <laughs> four times 50 cents is two dollars. Six times 50 cents is going to be three dollars. Seven times 50 cents is going to be $3.50. 10 times 50 cents is going to be $5. Now, flip it, reverse it. $10. 50 cents per banana. If I were to take 10 and divide it into the 50 cents per banana, I would get 20 bananas. And if I were to take $16.50 and divide it by 50 cents per banana, uh, that would be a total of 33 bananas. And don't forget, equivalent ratios have the same unit rate. Question five, review time. Two planes travel at a constant speed. Plane A travels 2,800 miles in five hours. Plane B travels 3,885 miles in Seven hours. Which plane is faster? Explain your reasoning. Let's get this down to one hour and see who's going the most miles. 2,800 miles in five hours. Let's get that to one hour. We can do that by dividing by five. And 2,800 divided by five is 560 miles per hour. Plane B is traveling 3,885 miles in seven hours. It's a long time to be in a plane. Hope they have some good movies. At least good pillows to take a nap. Mm, naps. 3,885 divided by seven would be 555 miles per hour. Well, 560 miles per hour versus 555 miles per hour. Both fast speeds, but the plane that's faster is plane A because, well, 560 is faster than 555. Two questions to go. Question six. A car has 15 gallons of gas in its tank. The car travels 35 miles per gallon of gas. It uses 1 35th of a gallon to go one mile. How far can the car travel? with 15 gallons. Show your reasoning. Well, we're given 15 gallons here. And so we're also given the unit rates here. And so I think it's much more useful to use the unit rate in this question that tells me how far I go in gallon of gas. We've been setting up tables for these in the past. So miles and uh, gallons. 
and our unit rate is telling us we're going 35 miles per gallon and we want to get to 15 gallons. So that's quite frankly as simple as just multiplying by 15 here. And 35 times 15 is going to be 525 miles in those 15 gallons. Now how much gas does the car uh, use to go 100 miles? Well, in this particular question we're given the 100 miles. So let's use the 135th to go one mile unit rate. So once again, we have miles and we have gallons and gallons. One mile, one thirty-fifth of a gallon. We're going to 100 miles. And so one times 100 gets us to the 100. And one thirty-fifth times 100 is going to be and I know this is just going to, you know, be such a thrilling answer. 100 over 35. 130 fifths. Now, that's the same thing if you were to break it down to 20 over 7, which is the same thing as 2 and 6 sevenths gallons of gas. So, there you go. Last, but certainly not least, because 7 is the biggest number, so it can't be the least. A box of cereal weighs 600 grams. How much is this weight in pounds? Explain or show your reasoning. Note, 1 kilogram is 2 and 2 tenths pounds. And note, they didn't tell you that 1 kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. And so if 1 kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams, let's, let's do this. 600 grams over 1 using our new strategy here of dimensional analysis. I know that I need to get this into kilograms. So in order for these units to cancel out, I need grams on top or on top and bottom to cancel out. And so my unit rate needs to be um, kilograms and grams here. And so that means one kilogram is one thousand grams. So now I'm into kilograms, but I need to go into pounds. And so I can now say, fine, kilograms has to go on the bottom and pounds is going to go on top. And I know two and two tenths pounds per one kilogram. And so now my kilograms can cancel out as a unit. And I'm left with the unit of pounds that I want. And so, 600 times 2 and 2 tenths. 1,320. My iPad locked up a little bit there, so if there's a little bit of a lag, I do apologize there. And that's going to be pounds over 1,000. And once you take 1,320, and divide by a thousand, you get one and three hundred, uh, well, one, one and three hundred twenty thousandths pounds, which could simplify to one and thirty two hundredths pounds. And that is it for this lesson. Grade six, unit three, lesson seven. Practice problems review on one more time. Equivalent ratios have the same unit rates. Good luck.